Hello, and welcome to The Other New York. I'm your host, Ellie, the King of Broadway, and today we're going to be talking about background acting in New York City. With me today are my guests Randy Jones, Stefan Robert, Gail Wilk, and Gene Roberts. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for having us. Thanks for coming today. Yes. So just a, a, a quick point of information for you. Background acting is what some people call extra work. And it's all those people that you see on the street, the people that are in the diner, the people walking through Grand Central Station, and the people in the post office. They're as important as the main actors because they give you the flavor of what the scene is going to be about. So for some experience on what background acting is like, let's start with Randy. How long have you been doing it here? Um, I've been doing it since like 2005. So you give or take like about eight, nine, ten years, a little bit more than that, you could say. Great. And what's it like for you? Oh, it's a great experience. I mean, um, it's, it, you know, I get a chance to observe and see how the directors work with the actors, with the background, and um, see what goes on on camera as well as behind cameras and stuff, and see what it, what it, what it really actually takes to make a film with all the equipment and the necessities they got to do to put a whole film of the project together. Excellent. Stefan? Uh, background acting, it's great because it allows you to uh, work with uh, big time directors, you know, and big time uh, ADs. ADs uh, are the assistant, assistant directors. directors. Yes. Getting their hours together so they can become directors. Yes, exactly. Uh, the thing about that is the big time directors get to see your face. You know, they're good at memorizing faces. You know, you may think they don't know who you are, but they do know. You know, they see your face, and that'll help you move up. Because if they need someone uh, to do a uh, featured role, you know, you're, since they know your face, you'll be the first one, uh, or one of the first people they go to. Excellent. Gail. I've been doing this for about five years, and what Stefan said is really true. If you have a very positive attitude, people pick up on that. And in my time, I've been on the cover of a DVD. I've been in a lot of, like, uh, you'd say, featured roles. And it's a great journey. I started out, well, I always was like a big fan of Days of Our Lives. That's actually how I started doing this. I went to an open call for So You Want to Be a Soap Star for Days of Our Lives. I realized when I was online that I was online with all actors, and I was like the only crazed fan. But uh, I did my thing, and the people there, they said I was really good. So that gave me the confidence to pursue this. What was a DVD cover? Love is Strange with John Litgo, Alfred Molina, and me. Wonderful. That just won a lot of awards. I know. <laughs> Excellent. And Gene? Uh, I find it to be a very good experience in respect to uh, background roles because I'm a principal actor and uh, I do just about everything there is. I mean, just for the love and sake of being an actor is the reason I've done it. Uh, I'm also a professional entertainer and that's also in a form of acting as well. And for background acting, it's an experience because, it, like Stefan said, uh, it gives you an experience of meeting the directors and the producers, and if like you know, if they like you and they like what you look like, or if they feel they may need you in a part, you're right there, and they can put you right in it. So that brings us to something called an upgrade. Mm -hmm. uh, upgrades are when you are working as a background actor, and the director decides he needs you to say something. Sometimes because you're sitting next to one of the principal actors and you need to have a reaction, or sometimes because something else is going on. Right. Have you guys ever been upgraded? Oh, yeah. Um, I have. I've been upgraded. I've been upgraded at Late Lead Zombie and I Am Legend, where uh, I gave me a chance to be the main character, pretty much. Although it ended up being uh, a green screen character at the end of the day, it still gave me the chance to become something more than just being a background actor. And uh, it, it brought me up, it kicked me up, bounced me up to principal. Where right, and so for that you get a contract. For that you get a contract, you get the whole nine yards. And, you and the residuals. And the residuals. That's the, the most important thing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was upgraded like two times, well more than that, but two times I can remember, on a commercial I did for eBay. Um, I was actually, um, 
like uh, um, playing a role like with a dog contest, like I was featured with another person. They had the camera on me and stuff, and it, you know, paid pretty good, and also you know got a royalty as well with that. And on another commercial I did for NFL, for a football commercial, I was sitting right next to the celebrity, and it was just me and him, and I was like the main person that was on camera outside from all the other extras. So I did get upgraded, and, you know, it's a good experience, mm -hmm. and people all over the and they're still watching it. Excellent. Well, that's what counts, right? They're <laughs> yeah. still watching it. Uh, have you done any, any work that you've got upgraded in? Yeah, the... Uh Upcoming film, Lucky Number, uh, starring uh, Method Man, he's in it. Um, they just needed uh, someone to uh, yell out in the crowd uh, one line. Um, you know, and they saw me, uh, uh, they saw me on set. Actually, it was the director's mother who, who saw me on set <laughs> and recognized me from the other uh, uh, few lead roles that I had gotten. She recognized me. She said, hey, it's good to uh, see you. Nice to meet you and everything. And then so I'm in the circle with the director, the director's mother, and, and, and all the, uh, you know, and all the main people. And they said, okay, well, then, you know, we'll use you. We'll give you a line. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I had a friend that was in a movie way back when called Sunday, Bloody Sunday. And uh, he was given one line. As on a whim of the director because he was sitting next to the principal and they wanted him to say something and he told me he put two of his kids through college on that so it can be quite a lucrative thing. <laughs> I'll tell you, a lot of people take up background acting also as a career in respect to see you know, they actually can make a living off of it. Most people have been told this is what they were able to do. They do background acting as a part of a living. Right. And a lot of people you know, they have learned a nice dollar. But a lot of people don't realize some of the big known stars you watch on television today, they start on background. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. Matter of fact, there's one actress, I um, forgot her name, um, I think it was Octavia something, did the help. She started Octavia in the background. Octavia Spencer. Yeah, she said, wow. started in the background. I said, yeah. Everyone, everyone loves Raymond. So started in the background. I said, get out of here. I didn't, you know, I was, you know, watching the interviews while they were showing on TV and everything. So background is a start. There's several companies out here that'll help you uh, start getting into uh, background work. Of course, you have your Grant Wolf League casting. Then you have your Central Casting, you have your Amerifilms Casting, and uh, you have your Barbara McNamara Casting, and then you have your online uh, uh, casting uh, uh, sites that help you, such as Casting Networks, and others are uh, Actors Access. So if somebody wanted to get into background work, they would just go to one of those places can I, and look into it. Can sure. I say something? One thing that really irks me about a lot of people thinking that they need like $5,000 headshots to start in background work, which you really do not need that at all, because chances are after you've worked like, you know, a couple of months or whatever, uh, you're going to find what your look is, what look you'd like to portray. And just to take like expensive headshots at the beginning is really probably a waste of money. The way I, I started, I started at Central Casting, and they take your picture. They will not even allow you to bring them a picture. They want to see how you you know actually look. I personally feel that uh, what everybody here is it's true. I mean, you really don't need that creative of headshots in order to just do background acting. But on the other hand, if you're looking to do, say, uh, advance your career in respect to going into principal work or anything like that, you would want to have headshots that are outstanding so that this way an agent or a casting director would notice that and give you a shot. You know, like I said, background acting is one of the best things you can do as far as getting your career started, as far as giving yourself a nice resume, so that's just where you have something on your resume to present to an agent or present to a casting director or even to a director, you know, that would give you a better chance in getting a shot in doing principal work. Absolutely. You know? And right. What so I... to be doing the principal work, the, the work that you're getting, the big bucks for the speaking the speaking roles right. you do need some type of a professional headshot but uh, a lot of the calls That's that I'm seeing That's a little down the road <coughs> right. from the beginning. Right. A lot of the calls that I'm seeing for background work uh, say they want a current photograph 
and it's okay to, to do it with your cell phone. They want to see what you look like today because, let's face it, there are, you know, 50-year-old actors out there still using their bar mitzvah <laughs> picture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> shot, you know? So, Ellie, you know. Ellie, that happened to me at an open call one day. I was uh, sitting next to a very nice, distinguished, gray-haired man, and I happened to look down at his black and white headshot, and he had dark hair in the headshot. Right. Which, that's not going right. to help So if you're submitting a headshot of what you looked like 20 years ago, you're probably not going to book the job. No way. It's true. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Have some of you made the transition from background work, or you're all still doing background work? Oh, I've, I've done a transition. I mean, I've done a transition. Of course, uh, as I've said earlier, I've done I Am Legend. But then right after that, I, I'd gotten calls to do various television commercials uh, and uh, TV shows. Like, for instance, I've done Law and Order Special Victims Unit. I've done several episodes as playing a detective on the show. And uh, one time was even well, as my hair started to grow out because, you know, I'm an entertainer and uh, they used me as a junkie, you know. And uh, with just not with that. I mean, I've also gotten upgraded uh, to other television shows in respect to, like, uh, Life on Mars, where I appeared as uh, Needy, the wasted hippie. There you go. <laughs> the type of guy who's always in trouble and uh, he's always being picked up by the cops and he's a hustler. You know, and I was, I got a chance to do that for maybe one or two episodes, and then they lost their contract. <laughs> yeah, right, it was a good show. It didn't make it. Randy, you were going to say? Well, yeah, I have my own <clears throat> independent small um, film company called Prosperity Film and Videos Productions, and um, I just we just finished doing our very first feature movie called Hood Rats, which would be up on Amazon in the next couple of months and also for screening. And now we're in the process of making another film, a feature film for 2016. And I have a comedy sitcom with a couple of new upcoming actresses and models called Can Life Get Any Worse Than This? Another one called Ashley, written by my um, writer, Jeanette Davis. And um, I have a couple other things. Matter of fact, I'm actually in a web series right now, two web series. One of them is called Compilation of Comedy in which I play a number of characters, and I'm in another web series um, for a website called WTM.com, which is about to be launched next month in June of 2015, and it's about to go further and far, and I think it's also a TV station or something like that. It's going to the next level. So there is a transition that I have made in my life in that area. So you're a busy guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you had time I'm to come looking, to us yeah. today. <laughs> no, no problem, no problem. I'm also looking for new talent and everything, you know, for the next project that we got coming. Oh, and I have a movie coming out um, this Christmas. It's called Christmas with the Joneses. It's about wow. family getting together. We've pretty much finished filming it. And um, we're looking All to put All from your it, production company. Yeah, from production company, yeah. We're looking to put it in, in the in select theaters, or we may just have it online. I'm not sure how we're going to do it. A lot of movies are, are online now. It's really exploding and stuff like that. Sure. So we, you know, got a couple of projects coming up wow. and other things as well. Excellent. Stefan? Yeah, uh, recently I did, uh, I had a lead part uh, in the, uh, in the uh, then Comedy Central series, uh, Inside Amy Schumer. Mm -hmm. It was just me and Amy, we got to uh, uh, do a, uh, a nice little scene together. You know, I'm uh, getting uh, a lot of notices from that. Excellent. Um, also, uh, I uh, did uh, the... Uh, the small uh, part in uh, where I speak, I just mentioned it, lucky number. Right. And also... Well, they say there are no small parts, <laughs> yeah. only small actors, so right? Small, right. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I got a, uh, I got a uh, lead part in uh, an independent film called uh, Hectic Knife. Uh, it's uh, sort of like an action comedy. Wonderful. Well, that's, yeah. that's awesome, dude. Wonderful. And Gail, you basically just started in the industry, right? Uh, well, five years. I started, uh, I was non-union, and one of the main reasons uh, for doing background work is to qualify for the union. In order to qualify at this time, you need three SAG waivers, mm -hmm. which means they will put a non-union person in place of a union person. If they can't find a yeah. union person to in fulfill fact, that need. Right. I got my <coughs> first two SAG waivers, which I'm very, very proud of, from the Cohen brothers for Inside Lewin Davis. Nice. So that was the really excited. I went to an open call. It's, I keep stressing open calls. You never know who's going to see sure, you. Sure, sure. You know, just get your face out there. And what did you get the and, SAG waiver as? What did you play? Uh, just 
uh, a person in the diner when John Goodman is they go into Chicago and they stop at a diner like in the middle of the night I was just like you know a diner person really wasn't complicated not difficult <laughs> Right. And now I am currently a new SAG member. That's what I'm new as. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, so I'm like re, you know, I'm starting over again. Right. Mm. I'm competing with the big kids now. Right. Well, right. So there are and, union rules about uh, how many people they have to take from the union actors before they can use non-union actors on set. That's what the benefit of, of being in a union is you get some protection. Uh, I believe it's 25 for a television series and 85 for a movie. For a movie. Correct. Uh, but then you get the SAG waivers. Uh, I, I got my first my first SAG waivers by playing uh, Hasidic Jew on on uh, Law and Order, and there weren't enough people to play that union actors to play that, so they waivered the non-union actors. Correct. <clears throat> and that's how I got my first two. And uh, finally, the third one. Uh, interesting, I got the first two right away, and this, the third Same one took me a year. Same here, the third one, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some my story, exactly. <laughs> some people, <laughs> some people are very lucky, yeah. Uh, my partner got his on Pelham 1, 2, 3. Uh, mm -hmm. He was one of the uh, three Hasidic boys in the uh, second car. Mm -hmm. And so he had 10 days on the shoot. Very interesting, 10 days. He was right next to the uh, detective that gets shot, the undercover detective gets mm -hmm. shot, and so he gets splattered with the detective's blood. blood. So wow. for three months, all the 10 days he worked were over three months, every day he had to spend a couple of hours in hair and makeup getting the blood put back in the, same spots in the exact it, same spot. Right. And the end result of, of that incredibly intense amount of work was uh, he's about two frames in a blur in the finished product. So, you know, we do a lot of work as background actors, and sometimes it's not even there. Uh, sure. We were talking about I Am Legend. Right. They shot that whole zombie apocalypse scene oh, we, on an we, we, it, it eight degree February day. Exactly, <laughs> and, we, and not even on a February day. Actually, I started filming since I was filming. I think I started filming around in January, something like that. Of, or late right, December. but they had something like a hundred and some odd, hundred and twenty-five oh, people. Hundred, maybe, for, maybe better <coughs> for this big zombie attack. Zombie attack, yeah. And everybody's out there dressed in in torn and tattered That's clothing, clothing and in the freezing cold. Oh. And then it was murder. The scene got cut. <laughs> the scene gets all cut. The scene got and cut. we end up becoming computer images. Uh, exactly. Yes. Exactly. So it's not as glamorous as some people would believe, right? No, it's, it's not. not all you know. Oh, you're an actor. It's a ha, ha wow. You know, you got your entourage. Everything's wonderful. It's a lot of hard work. What's it the is. longest days you've ever had on set as a background actor? Day? Yeah, I did like sixteen hours. Sixteen hours. <laughs> Anybody had over that? Uh, I did eighteen hours. So eighteen nine, hours. I'm a legend. I've worked eighteen hours. I've worked sixteen hours. Nine hours. Mm -hmm. On, um, I think when I did the take in a Pelham one two three, I shot. There were a lot of overnights on that. A lot of overnights yeah. on that. Yeah, and I shot like maybe sixteen to sixteen and a half hours on that. And uh, I have also did a part where I did principal role for um, uh, what was that with Matt Damon, uh, Born Ultimatum, and I shot like uh, 17 and a half hours on that, and it was very exerting. Right. Know? Have any of you done one of these really long days where you never got called to set? Uh. Ooh. Oh yeah, that happens. That happens. happens. That happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, that happens too, right? You still get the paycheck. Yeah, you get the paycheck. I kind of like that. See, some people I know, especially one particular guy, a good friend of mine. He's like, listen, when I come in and a couple of I want to work. I want to work. I think, listen, you rather it's better to sit down, relax, get paid for. It. They don't call you yet. No problem. Just sit down, relax. You got some food. You get in your office. That's it. It's like being retired at a young age. You just exactly. Relax. Exactly. You know? I, I mean, did. I don't, I don't mind, I don't care. I, I, I may be lazy, but you know, if I can sit down 12 hours and just, you know, be on my phone on YouTube and just eat. <laughs> <laughs> the glamorous life of I an have actor. No problem. Oh, man. Yeah. You have uh, a story? Well, well, it is going back to long shoots. Like, I've actually done, if you could say, like a 36 hour uh, stretch where I worked all night from like six to like five in the morning. Oh, then I yeah. went to another set, worked during the day until like uh, uh, 4 p.m. and then went back to the uh, set, the first set for uh, the second night, and then, then I worked all night 
Man, yeah. it didn't like, it's like I, I gotta no say, time. that's a younger man's game. I'm not doing those anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you had a story for us, Yeah, Kip. I did like a 12 hour day on Blue Bloods, like from 7 in the morning to 7 at night. And all I had was like a half an hour lunch break. I was mm. working the mm. whole time, I was in like every single scene. Right. Right. And you were non union then? Or, no, or union. union. Right. Yeah. So as a union That's, actor, they have to give you a, a meal break was, every six hours. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what they did, and then they just worked you the rest of the time. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's not all glitz and glamour like they'd have us believe, right? No, no, no. Also, we, we, we have to work just as hard as the main actors do, yes. not even harder sometimes. Right. And also, I met some people that, um, that's not even actors. So you're an actor, so no, so I'm retired, and this is just for me making some extra money and stuff like that. And some people, like some guys, will make some jokes and be like, well, yeah, I'm retired and stuff. And, you know, I'm doing this because I need to stay away from my wife. Another thing that's uh, hard uh, about uh, doing the acting is that you'll, uh, you'll be shooting for different seasons. Like, I was in a show where in the movie it's the summer, but in reality... It was the winter, yeah. the right. freezing cold. <laughs> right. And then, you know, we have to dress the summer clothes, but it's freezing. <laughs> right. I, we, we, we did a, uh, it we did a, a Paul Giamatti, uh, uh, Paul Giamatti, and I think it was Paul Rudd movie about uh, Christmas trees or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it was a December shoot, and it was in the middle of the summer. <laughs> and so we were all bundled up in our oh winter clothes. Oh, my God. You know, uh, I, I played a, a Hasidic Jew, but we had to wear an overcoat, and it was like 105 degrees outside, so <laughs> we've all gone through true. that. I remember we did this TV show, what used to be called Rubicon. I don't know if any of y'all did I that. remember Rubicon, mm -hmm. sure. It was 100, like, like about 100 degrees humidity outside, and 90-something degrees, 100 degrees of weather temperature. And we was out there almost 12 hours, Central Park. I, and I had my, you know, I, I had my summer, I think I had my jeans on, my summer stuff, and it was so hot. The heat was, like, hitting in our face, and we had to do this thing over and over and over and over. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm like, dang. And then the main star, they had long sleeves, they was dressed up in suits. I felt bad for them. I said, man. And that day, I was even feeling bad for the police officers that were walking around, because <laughs> <laughs> they got sweat in their arms, and I'm kind of big, so I sweat in seconds. And right. which I don't mind, because when you sweat, you drop pounds off. So it was an exercise thing for me all day. Right. So I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and we had to walk almost, we had to go on some steps to go to the crafty and stuff like that, and it was like something. So there are days that, you know, we stay long outside, stay long inside. You know, just to tell a little secret. I don't mind, I like doing overnights, because I'm saying, if it's like a hundred of us, and we like in the middle of Times Square or something like that, I say, listen, we gotta be outside all day and it's gonna be cold or whatever, so you know what, I'm gonna go five blocks from here and get on my cell phone, talk for about three or four hours, let me know when they're going for lunch, I'm gonna walk back. You know? <laughs> well, you know, we don't recommend that. Not you know, all the yeah. time. I'm just saying it. You know, <laughs> there's directors looking, bro. Now, now, now they know People that's watching. what you do. Oh, I'm doing my own stuff now. So I'm not really doing that. <laughs> well, I can I can tell you a story. We did a, a movie called Arthur. It was a, a, a an oh, August day. August. It was 105 degrees outside, mm -hmm. and you know I'm head to toe in black as a as a uh, rabbi, and uh, we had uh, a small break. And then we had to come back, and they needed to move a car. And it was one of the background actors, and she had split for the day. She wow. figured nobody would notice she was gone, mm -hmm. and she'd come back and pick up her voucher at the end of the day. Well, they needed to move her car. And so it was a two-and-a-half-hour ordeal until so finally somebody was able to get a hold of her and tell her to come move her car. They were not happy about that. So we don't recommend doing those things. No, not at all. Gail, are you doing the acting thing full time now? Well, I'm trying really hard. Like I said, I'm re-establishing myself. Mm -hmm. On the side, I do a lot of like product testing. I'm a hair and makeup model. And I'm really concentrating on the acting. And one thing, uh, the guys are not gonna say this, but I'm just going to say it's really important that girls don't show up with like six inch heels because mm. you're going to be on your feet most, of the, most day. of the time. Yeah, wear Make comfortable sure you shoes. have comfortable shoes. Hey, that That's goes for the guys too. Important. You know, true. Very, very that goes true. for the guys too. Yeah, you know? when we do those things. Like I mean, we were doing this thing called um, New Year's Eve, and we was right there in Times Square. 
I don't, if it's like 500 miles, I don't, I'm not going to be in the middle for eight hours standing. You know, I mean, I try to find someone on the side where I can sit while they got the big plan out of the city, sit on the side by the seat. And then when they say, okay, um, background, I'm about to roll them, then I get up a few minutes, then when they sit back. I'm like, I can't, like, you know, personally with me. I don't want to, like, right. sit down, stand for, like, well, eight, I, 12 I, hours. I found that, that, you know, when I was a young upstart just getting into the business, I wanted to be front and center all the time. <laughs> and nine times out of ten, if not 11 times out of ten, they take the front row of people and say, okay, we want you guys in the back, or they'd rearrange you. And so my attitude was, I'm just going to be where I'm going to be, and they're going to tell me if they want me someplace else. True. So, you know, That's it's true. not all if about they being want up you, in front. They will find yeah. you. They will you find you. You can't position yourself in front. You're yeah. not the director. <laughs> exactly, exactly. They do that. They just like, man, they try. I see that. So like, like, they try. That's the importance, the background acting. You are, you are yeah. as important to the scene as the main actors, because exactly. you you are the atmosphere of the scene. Yes, that's true. All right. So, um, Gene, where can we find you? Well, you can find me just about any place. Now, Monique. <laughs> no, uh, on I the can corner be of no. No, I'm not in the corner of no. <laughs> <laughs> I could be found. Uh, you could be find. You could find me on. Uh, well, actually, as an entertainer, I'm in all record stores. Uh, I've been. Um, um, on uh, iTunes, uh, Amazon. Great. You have a you website know, that we website, could reference? Yeah, you can website you. We can go. You can find me on uh, my Facebook page, Gene Roberts Facebook page. Okay, great. And uh, also, um, I got an email address through Val Management, V A L Management. Excellent. Uh, Just running a little short on time. I want to get everybody yep. in. Okay, yep. I'm in a movie called Before I Disappear. Okay. I have a really sh close up. I'm the clock lady. Nice. Okay, that's coming out on DVD like tomorrow, I think. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. And uh, Facebook, Gail Wilk on Facebook. Excellent. Stefan, you have a website? Uh, yeah, you can just use my Facebook. Facebook Stephane also. Stefan Robert, S T E F A N, last name R O B E R T. All right. Yeah. Uh, Randy Jones, you catch me on my new film coming out, Hood or Ass, The Great Turnaround, No Cops Allowed. And uh, you can catch me on Facebook. Randy Jones on Facebook, Randy Jones on um, Twitter. Uh, you can also catch me on LinkedIn, Lincoln, Randy Jones. You catch me on All right, we'll find you everywhere, right? <laughs> on all, all social YouTube, media. YouTube.com slash Randy Jones Films. Fabulous. Yeah. I'd like to thank you all for being here today. Thank you for having me. And uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see yes. you again on our next episode.